Vickers, one of the members of Star's Alpha Team, being known as one of the less courageous members of the squad. As we watch his imminent death happen in the classic Resident Evil 3, we weren't given a proper backstory as to who he was and why he could play an integral part for RE3 Remake. And I say this because with Gamescom 2019 just around the corner, and there are rumors of RE3 Remake being announced during that event. So if that's a possibility, let's go ahead and break down who Brad Vickers was, what was his role in the Resident Evil universe, and what elements could they add to his story in Resident Evil 3 Remake. Anyways, before we get started with the video, my name is Heydeva, and I cover a lot of Resident Evil content, so if you guys are wanting more discussions about RE3 Remake, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Also, maybe sharing this with a friend and any other social media outlets out there. I'd really, really appreciate the support. Alright, so let's do a quick backstory on who Brad Vickers was and how he ended up in the classic Resident Evil 3. So Brad, like I mentioned earlier, was a member of RPD's Star's Alpha Team, where he worked mostly as their helicopter pilot and chemical preventative specialist. So in Resident Evil 1, he and his colleagues that included Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Barry Byrne, and Albert Wesker were tasked to locate the Star's Bravo Team after losing communications with them during their investigation in the Arklay Mountains. But this would turn into a nightmare for the whole squad, because once landing in the Arklay Mountains, they were immediately attacked by some of the infected Cerberuses, taking out Joseph in the process. So Brad, during this moment of fear, ended up using the helicopter that they were using and abandoning his teammates, truly living up to the nickname that they gave him, Chicken Heart. No! Don't go! So once in the air, Brad was able to recollect himself and found enough courage to turn back and attempt to locate his teammates that he abandoned, which coincides with the ending portion of Resident Evil 1, where he's the one who dropped off the rocket launcher that would help defeat the T-00 Tyrant. But Brad's story doesn't end here, because right after the events of Resident Evil 1, the remaining Stars members attempted to shed light on what has happened in the Spencer Mansion, making it known that it was Umbrella all along that was doing all these horrific experimental projects using the T-Virus. But the Stars members' pleas were in vain, because when they reported the incident to the corrupted Chief Irons, all he did was shrug them off and disbanded the Stars team, weakening their influence among the public. Also during this time, instead of backing up his comrades about the events of Resident Evil 1, Brad turned a blind eye and sided with Chief Irons, accelerating the process of the Stars members disbandment. I'll get you, you fucker! <sighs> so right now, we have a rough idea of Brad's ideals and his stance on taking on adversity, which is reflected perfectly with some of the stuff that I'm about to tell you. Because before the events of Resident Evil 3, Raccoon City was slowly started to be infested with zombies due to the T-Virus outbreak. And also, it was during this time that we can find a file that stated Brad's true feelings in regards to his situation and his stance as a STARS member. Because shown here, he says that there's a monster constantly hunting him down, hunting down the remaining STARS members. Also, he mentions that he wishes he could have left the STARS team much earlier if he knew what kind of fate he would end up in, which is perfectly depicted here, in one of the most iconic moments in Resident Evil history history. Because now, we see the end of Brad as we know it, with the only last remnant of him was our encounter with him in the beginning of Resident Evil 2, where we see him as a super zombie, one that would be able to absorb a lot of bullets and would give us a special key if we defeated him. Anyways, now this brings up our prediction on what Brad could be like in RE3 Remake, because what I would love for them to do is to have a separate campaign for Brad, giving us more of a backstory to his personality and his adventures during the Raccoon City incident. Also, it would be amazing to see how he encountered Nemesis for the first time, and how he's been on the run since meeting the Tyrant, because this would add more to his depth in Resident Evil 3 Remake, possibly making us sympathize more with his character. Also, I don't think it would be too much to add him in the game as a playable character as well, because in Resident Evil 2 remake, we were actually shown a poster of him recruiting people for the RPD. But the only question I had when playing RE2 Remake was why wasn't Brad shown to be a zombie during the game? Because he was completely absent, not even showing up as a super zombie like in the classic RE2. Which makes me speculate that they could retcon some story points for RE3 Remake and change up certain situations in the game that could make Brad a much more involved character. Anyways, what do you guys think about Brad? Do you think he should have his own campaign in RE3 Remake or should he keep the same 
screen time like you did from the classic RE3? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you guys enjoy the content, please feel free to hit that notification bell icon so you guys can be alerted when I upload my next video. Anyways, thank you guys so much, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day, and this is Hey Deva, signing out.